Hi, this is Congressman Tom Cole. This is another one of our congressional weekly chats. Uh, unlike uh, usual, I'm actually doing this from my Norman office because for last week and this week, the House has not been in session, and I've used that time to travel around the district, uh, visit with a variety of groups in a variety of different communities. Uh, it's a pretty big district, and uh, you get an opportunity to go to Chamber of Commerce meetings, go to individual business sites, uh, visit uh, folks that are, are involved in a variety of activities, and uh, it's been very informative. You know, as I've traveled, there's been a number of things that have been uh, particularly interesting that are worth reflecting on. Probably the most interesting thing uh, in my visit uh, home this, uh, this break uh, has been the opportunity to visit with uh, Ukrainian soldiers that are training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma on Patriot batteries uh, before they go back uh, to defend their own country. Um, I know there's a variety of opinions on the wisdom of engaging heavily uh, in Ukraine. In full disclosure, I've been supportive of that. I think uh, there's no question who started this war. It's the Russians. There's no question about how dangerous it will be uh, if they succeed. And frankly, we should also always keep in mind that if they're successful in Ukraine, the Chinese are watching this and uh, it'll encourage them to do things in Taiwan. So I think there's a big stake in the Ukrainians being able to defend their own freedom. Again, they're the ones doing the fighting. There are no foreign troops involved against the Russians, uh, but we certainly have made a significant commitment in terms of supplying them. And it's worth noting we're not the only ones. Uh, many other countries are giving, uh, in terms of their gross national product, as much as the United States is. Some of the smallest countries in the world have made some of the most substantial uh, contributions. And this has been uh, an area where, as a country, we've moved together. Uh, and uh, as a Congress, it's uh, been bipartisan. There's been a majority of members on both sides of the aisle have been consistently supporting, uh, supportive of helping Ukraine. How important that is was brought home to me when I had the opportunity to visit with Ukrainian soldiers at Fort Sill. Now you have to remember, uh, these are very experienced air defenders. Uh, they've been defending their country for over a year on, with old Russian equipment, or what's called the S-300 uh, air defense system. Uh, we're upgrading that capability, not with the very best things we have, but with things that are certainly more capable in, in our Patriot 1 and 2 uh, missile batteries. Uh, again, these soldiers arrived directly from combat. Uh, they've been uh, in the field, and not in another country, but in their own, and they all know they're headed back to combat. Um, as the uh, uh, officer that uh, took me through and introduced me to the Ukrainians pointed out to me, he said, sir, you're not going to meet anybody that hasn't lost friends, family, and uh, and uh, fellow soldiers uh, in this conflict. And so they are focused and very intense. Indeed, I met one individual that had lost both parents and a spouse. Um, so that person's pretty focused on doing the right thing. So I'm proud of our people for training them. I'm proud of our country for giving them the tools they need. Uh, and I'm extraordinarily impressed with the, the will of the Ukrainians to defend their own country. Uh, I do, uh, frankly, am critical of the administration in, in the regard that I think uh, the Russians, um, frankly, were uh, encouraged to do this in part by the failure of the Biden administration in Afghanistan to uh, uh, stand up to aggressors. Uh, we turned over a country of 38 million people back to the same people that had given Osama bin Laden pressure. And frankly, the president was part of the administration, the Obama-Biden administration, that uh, let the, the Russians uh, uh, take Korea and parts of uh, eastern Ukraine uh, without even providing lethal aid at that time to the Ukrainians to defend themselves. So uh, I think I understand why Vladimir Putin made the reckless decision that he made. Uh, it's important to remember this is a, a war that's costing tens of thousands of lives. The Russians have suffered over 200,000 casualties. Certainly the Ukrainians have suffered tens of thousands of casualties. Lots of innocent people have been killed. It's important to us that that kind of behavior is not rewarded with success. Uh, because if it is, uh, both uh, Vladimir Putin and other people will do the same thing. So that was an interesting visit. But you know, uh, I also had a chance to talk to a lot of Oklahomans about what was on their minds aside from Ukraine and, and China, and those were always big topics. Uh, they're concerned about inflation. They, uh, they know that uh, 
when this president walked into office, inflation was running at 1.4 percent, and we were in a very robust recovery. Now they see the economy slowing down. They see inflation uh, stubbornly persistent. Uh, they know that our border was more or less secure when this administration came into office. Now we have a, an unprecedented crisis in terms of not just illegal entries, but human trafficking and drugs on the southern border. All that can be laid at the feet of the Biden administration. They know in an oil and gas state that this has been an administration consistently hostile to um, fossil fuel, and uh, they're concerned about that. And, and quite honestly, they're happy to see a Republican majority back in the House. One person put it to me, finally there's some brakes on the car again. Uh, they won't have as much reckless spending as we've had uh, over the last two years, and uh, that's exactly a um, uh, correct observation. So again, it was good to be home. It was good to listen uh, to the wisdom, the concerns, and, and the practical suggestions from uh, Oklahomans. Uh, look forward to plunging back into uh, uh, the work at hand, uh, uh, because we've got a lot, a lot of big issues in front of us in Washington, D.C., but, you know, nothing like coming home, nothing like being reminded how privileged you are to represent people that are consistently uh, commonsensical, conservative, and incredibly decent and hardworking. So it was good to be home. Now it's time to get back to work. Look forward to talking to you next week.